This is NATO's most dangerous bomber. In 1949, NATO, or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, was formally created to act, first and foremost, as a deterrent against Soviet expansion in Europe in the aftermath of World War II. The United States envisioned it to be a tool to prevent nationalist tendencies from returning to Europe and to promote integration on the continent. The origins of the treaty was in 1948, when several countries of Western Europe, including the United Kingdom and France, formed an alliance under the Brussels Treaty against a possible German attack after the war. Soon the U.S. began negotiations with these countries for the North Atlantic Treaty to prevent Europe from negotiating with the Soviet about security concerns. There were 12 founding NATO countries ranging from the United States to Portugal. In today's world, NATO has 30 member countries and counting, and its purpose is to provide political and military protection to its members. Since several superpowers formed this entity, including the United States and Canada, the military power of this body is undoubtedly enviable. In the modern era, it can count on nearly 3.5 million personnel, troops, and civilians. It owns a host of Western weaponry, courtesy of its powerful member states, and one such brutal bomber is the B-52 Stratofortress. The B-52 Stratofortress stands out as one of the most capable bombers ever built for the United States military, or for any Western country, even 70 years after it was first flown on April 15, 1952. It was built across the time span of the years 1952 to 1962, and the United States government has improved the performance of the aircraft both during that time and since. After its name implies, the aircraft is believed to have been a successor to a B-29 Superfortress variant and the B-47 Stratagen. The smaller B-29 destroyed 69 cities in nuclear and incendiary attacks on Japanese soil during the Second World War before performing similar operations in Korea. One year following the end of World War II, development on the B-52 began. It was designed primarily for the transportation of nuclear weapons, as well as for the potential deployment of those weapons against the Soviet Union and its defense allies under the Warsaw Pact. Although it didn't see action in Europe, it performed extensive service in Vietnam, especially during the linebacker raids under the Nixon administration, which carpet-bombed North Vietnamese cities. While it was considered highly sophisticated when it entered service in 1955, the aircraft's simplicity would make it increasingly admired as its successors. The B-1B, B-2 as well as the canceled B-70 became inefficient, difficult to operate, and impossible to maintain. The B-52 will have served in the U.S. Air Force longer than the B-1 or B-2, both of which were intended successors by the time they're retired. Despite being built 60 years ago, the B-52 will continue to serve for a long time thanks to its reliability, ease of maintenance, and low-cost operation. In addition to combat service in Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria, B-52s have frequently been sent to regions of high tension, such as missions over Iran undertaken by the Trump administration, as well as missions transmitting North Korean signals and challenging Chinese territorial claims. While the basic airframe has remained the same, new engines, sensors, and weapon systems have helped keep the aircraft viable. The last remaining variant, the B-52H, which came into service in the mid-90s, is expected to soon offer the first hypersonic weapon in the American fleet after successful testing in July of 2022. As the role of bombers has evolved, the B-52 has been almost exclusively tasked with the role of destroying targets at standoff distances using long-range cruise missiles, as it's quite vulnerable in proximity to enemy fighters and air defenses. Similar trends are evident in foreign bomber programs such as the Russian 222M, 295, 260M, and Chinese H-6, all of which are no longer classified as bombers and almost never carry short-range gravity bombs. 
In comparison, the B-2 Spirit Bomber's suitability in the role against newer air defense systems is higher due to its stealth profile, which allows it to potentially survive against moderately defended targets and drop bombs from close ranges. Since it's surpassing the B-1 and B-2 bombers, and with the possible production more bomber units to expand the fleet, the B-52 will likely be flown alongside the B-21 Raider stealth bomber in the future. There has already been a phasing out of the B-1, whereas a small fleet of 20 B-2s should be retired by the 2030s. While the B-52 remains a good candidate to continue flying into the second half of the 21st century, it's less certain what aircraft will ultimately replace it. 102 units of the B-52H, the variant of the B-52 that is in service today, have been built since 1961. This variant came to be after improvements were made to the B-52GS in order to make up for the B-58 supersonic bomber's delays and its short production run. The B-58 was later retired from service due to its high maintenance requirements and operational costs less than 10 years after entering service. When the B-52 eventually leaves service, its capabilities are expected to be far superior to what they are today, and its role in high-tension areas is likely to continue as the integration of hypersonic weapons gives it a new lease on life. Its importance will likely vary greatly based on the capabilities of the B-21 being developed for service alongside it. A key requirement for the B-21 is the ability to carry a comparable range of advanced standoff weapons and to maintain high availability rates, which the B-1 and B-2 didn't have. What do you think about the brute strength of the B-52 Stratofortis? Do you find it impressive? Do you think it's capable of wreaking havoc on enemy states like Russia and China in the case that conflict becomes unavoidable? Or do you believe that better, stronger weapons would be given more importance in a potential conflict? Comment your thoughts below. Let us know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos folks.